How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So as I was about to click record, we're going to talk about another player the Yankees had interest in. The Yankees made a trade with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Definitely not the team I anticipated that making a deal with after they landed Yoshinobu Yamamoto and obviously Otani and everything else. But uh, the Yankees acquired Caleb Ferguson, a left-handed relief pitcher. And guys, you probably have never heard of this guy before. He's 27 years old in the final year of arbitration before he hits free agency in 2025. We're going to break him down for you because, you know, we could just make a video about a guy who is basically nothing, but Caleb Ferguson's actually a good pitcher. He's a decent bullpen arm, and he can support uh, the Yankees in 2024 at a pretty high level. So definitely excited to break down what he brings to this team, his pitch mix, kind of where he slots into this bullpen. Keep in mind, our bullpen was very right-handed heavy, and now bringing in a lefty like Ferguson adds a little bit of diversity. We needed a lefty average. Lucas Lickie was traded to the Padres. You know, there's a lot of turnover this year for the Yankees on the roster. So good player, Ryan. You know, what are you thinking right now about him and how you do today, my friend? I'm doing great. And and first and foremost, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, just the idea that the Yankees are like they they, they weren't going to add to the bullpen. They weren't going to do anything. Look, I'm not saying I didn't want Phil Maton. I'm not saying I didn't want, uh, you know, Keenan Middleton. I obviously really wanted Keenan Middleton. Um, but if you're going to sit here and, I mean, there are people who are basically like, oh, the Yankees have a good enough offseason because they didn't, you know, they haven't added a reliever, whatever it may be. This is why you wait it out. When you wait it out, you wait and see what the Yankees are going to do, things that are going to happen, how things end up shaping out. And I think Caleb Ferguson's a really so- strong pitcher. He has a pretty good fastball cutter mix. He does actually also have a sweeper, which I find interesting because you typically don't see left-handed pitchers carry sweepers because they work against lefties more than righties if you're left-handed. And there's not a lot of left-handed batters compared to right-handed batters. But getting back to the arsenal here, the cutter is gross. It gets a lot of vertical drop. It gets a lot of uh, glove side break for a cutter. Good whiff rates, the four-seam fastball, similar situation, solid movement profile uh, from a lower slot as well. He released from a super low slot, so it makes his fastball play up. Sitting at 95.8 miles an hour, there's a lot of good mileage there. Um, Gets a good amount of chases, the whiff rate's above average, he throws in zone at an above average clip, he has a 108 stuff plus, and a 348 expected win on base average on contact. For those who are not aware what that is, that's basically a damage prevention metric, and how often do you allow, you know, damage contact, and that's adjusting for, you know, launch angle, and exit velocity and stuff of that nature so ultimately here Alex the Yankees get a really solid left-handed reliever we don't know what the return is yet as of recording I'm sure we'll figure it out in the next few hours or if it's the case of like that Victor Gonzalez trade we won't know until tomorrow because that if you remember it took all day for that to happen um it's supposed to be a quad a pitcher and a Dominican summer league guy I'm not sure who exactly that is but I do think end of the day that the New York Yankees um You know, I think the New York Yankees got a really good upgrade here. And if you look at the back end of their bullpen now, you you know, Victor Gonzalez and Caleb Ferguson will both battle. will be like the Yankees' primary left-handed guy. I think Ferguson has the edge uh, over Gonzalez right now just based on durability and, you know, a stronger track record of performance. But if your eighth reliever is Luke Weaver and your seventh reliever is like Victor Gonzalez or Scott Efros, Alex, this is one of the best bullpens in baseball, like flat out. And then you think of all the minor league depth they've added, this is going to be a stud unit. Absolutely. I mean, if Scott Efros is like one of your back end guys, you're in a pretty damn good spot because Scott Efros, when he's healthy playing well, is a very good player. And obviously, he's under control for a long time, having missed all of last year with Tommy John surgery. Um, but look, this is a good player, guys. I'll, I'll kind of give you a little breakdown on his numbers. So last season, 60.1 innings, Ferguson Toss had a 3.43 ERA, 3.43 or 3.34 FIP. Um, 10.44 strikeouts per nine, 72.7% left on base rate, and nearly a 50% ground ball rate. So that definitely is attractive for the Yankees who are trying to keep the ball on the ground. Um, But his best season was back in 2022. So only two years removed from that. He did only throw 34.2 innings, but had a 182 ERA. Really is a four-seam fastball cutter guy. But here's a question for you, Ryan. You know, forcing fastball cutter, def, like varying velocities. Obviously, his cutter is more like around the 88, 87 mile an hour range, whereas his fastball is actually almost at the 96 miles an hour range. That's pretty good velocity from him. Um, seems to me kind of like a Wandy Peralta uh, replacement. 27 years old, so a lot younger than Wandy. But I'll ask you this. His sweeper, he only used it 2.8%. Do you think that's a pitch that Matt Blake is going to try to work with? We know Matt Blake loves sweepers. Or do you think you just kind of keep what he's been doing, um, you know, keep his strengths in play with the cutter four seam fastball. Yeah, so I'm trying to look at his uh, the the usage of the sweeper as the season went on. As I mentioned earlier, it's weird for lefties to have a sweeper because sweepers play better to same sided hitters, and if you're a left handed pitcher 
you're not going to face a lot of lefties. There's a reason why the Yankees are super right-handed bullpen and why there are a lot of right-handed bullpens in baseball. And that's because typically relievers play better to same-handed pitcher uh, hitters versus opposite-handed hitters. So if you load up on righties, you're loading up on pitchers who have an advantage over the majority hitter in this league. Now, again, looking at that sweeper usage, he didn't have a sweeper before this year. So that would indicate to me that this is a new pitch for him. That this is a pitch for him that he's kind of been toying with or experimenting with or, you know, has been tinkering with, uh, for lack of better terms. Uh, if you get his usage per month of the pitch, it really picked up towards the end of the season. August is when he peaked in terms of usage of the pitch. And if you looked at when he started throwing it, which was in July, uh, and I don't know if I want to use that July or that June sample size because it's 0.6%. So we'll go from July onwards and see if there's any like notable difference in ERA. If there is, then that's probably a pitch he's going to use more. If there isn't, yeah, it's a 386 ERA got blown up towards the end. Strikeout rates went up. Walk rates were around the same. And home runs, ra- home run rates didn't increase. Batpip did increase uh, to 414. Maybe that's an indication that he was getting a little bit unlucky. Um, maybe that sweeper is a pitch he utilizes more. It's tough. It's tough to say because it's tough to say what his feel of the pitch is. Does he love throwing the pitch? Is it a pitch that the Dodgers asked him to throw and he just kind of didn't feel like he liked? He did decrease the usage of the pitch after August. Um, it's tough. Like when it comes to like, hey, should a pitcher throw a pitch more? It comes down to their comfort, their feel, the matchup, all those different variables. Are the Yankees going to be using Ferguson in a ver- in a lot of left-handed situations? Are they going to use him in righty and lefty situations? Because if it's righty and lefty situations, I think he's going to be relying on that four-seamer and that cutter a lot more because they play better to righties. But overall, like he just has a very diverse pitch mix. And I think that's the important thing to take away here. He has a cutter that gets a lot of drop that can play against righties and lefties. He has a four-seamer with plenty of ride that can jam lefties uh, and get swings and misses against righties. And of course, he has the sweeper, which is a great equalizer against left-handed batters because sharp horizontal movement, I think it's like 16 inches of break on his sweeper to the opposite side. That's going to be tough on guys. It's a varying look. Somebody pointed this out on Twitter, and I, and I wanted to talk about this as well. The Yankees are a very sinker-heavy bullpen. Clay Holmes, Jonathan Loisaga, um, you know, a guy like even Victor Gonzalez, right? Scott Efros relies on a sinker. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of other guys in that bullpen. Ian Hamilton is a sinker-sweeper guy. I know he's a four-seamer, but the sinker and the, and the, or the slider, not the sweeper, um, are his primary pitches. Caleb Ferguson is a four-seam fastball cutter guy, and we were talking about potentially adding a guy like Phil Maton or adding a guy like Keenan Middleton. I talked about the differentiation in looks, how they provide a different look. Even a guy like Hector Neris provides a different look. I think variation in release points and variation in pitch usage is super important for your bullpen because it keeps, keeps teams guessing, and I personally think this is going to be a great addition for the Yankees. He does only have one year remaining on his contract, if I'm not mistaken, but he's only making $2.4 million. If the Yankees wanted to extend him, they could. If the Yankees wanted to, uh, you know, if they felt like he wasn't good enough this uh, this upcoming year and they wanted to let him go, they can let him go. And he's not going to be expensive. He costs less than any other reliever that signed. I think this is a home run move for the Yankees. Not saying it's a Juan Soto move, but it just made a lot of sense and they waited out the market and they got what they were looking for. Yeah, look, I'm going to throw something out there. Um, it's quite evident to me. And look, we have multiple players now that are on one-year deals, finally of arbitration, Caleb Ferguson, Juan Soto, and Alex Verdugo, and of course, Glaber Torres as well. I mean, I don't know about you, Ryan, but to me, this feels like the Yankees are going all in on 2024 because a lot of these guys could end up not on this team, and they're trading a lot of prospects away for guys who can help them this upcoming season with the risk of them leaving. Even Juan Soto you know, could end up leaving. Why do you think they're doing that? Do you think that this really is like, that's why I don't think the Yankees are done. That's why I think that Cashman's waiting for the right moves to cross his desk, not just making reactionary moves. Because it seems to me the team is trying to build that World Series caliber roster for 2024. They've taken certainly steps in the right direction with, you know, Soto and Verdugo overhauling that outfield. But they're not really going after guys with a ton of, you know, controllable, controllability, whatever the word might be. And that, to me, says that they are thinking now. They're thinking we ought to win now, not in three, four, five years. You know, if you, if you re-sign Soto, that kind of – that narrative shifts a little bit, but we are still far away from that. I mean, to me, it feels like we're, we're going all in. I think that another starting pitcher would be great, but I don't think we make that move anytime soon. I think we remain patient. We wait until the deadline, and we make that move – to make sure they're healthy, because look, the Yankees, they went and did this with Frankie Montas where they acquired him and he was hurt already. I think they're going to wait, make sure a starting pitcher is healthy, acquire him over the summer um, to reinforce their their roster. But, you know, to me, what are your thoughts about this? The fact that we're, we're getting a lot of players that are only one year, one and dones, unless we extend them, that's kind of a telling sign the Yankees are trying to win now, no? Yeah, the Yankees are going for it. Um, Matt Gage is actually part of this trade. 
Matt Ga- John Heyman just tweeted Matt Gage is going to the Dodgers in this deal. I imagine that's the quad A shame. pitcher. Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, we were going to interview him this week. <laughs> yeah, that kind of blows. <laughs> that kind of blows, man. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll wish him well. Uh, but Matt Gage yeah. is going there. I imagine, and then the other guy's a DSL guy. Now, if you're asking me, um, you know, whether I w- wanted Ferguson or Gage, um, I probably would have taken Ferguson. Like, I just think the track record's a lot better. I think Gage is actually still a pretty interesting pitcher, and I'm not going to lie. Like, I, th- I, I think he's going to be pretty good with LA. So, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Yankees, they've, they've gotten, uh, they've gotten a lot, they've gotten a lot better in their bullpen. It, it's, it's pretty simple in my opinion. Like, I think it just comes down to the Yankees got a lot better in their bullpen. They went for it. Um, and like, if you're still complaining about this off season, could they use some more starting pitching? Sure. Um, you know, is there a guy out there that you're necessarily like, they have to pay him at that price point or have to trade for him at that price point? No. Right. Like as of, as of right now, the market has not been very favorable to, you know, the Yankees or to any team looking for starting pitching. I know people are going to point out the, the Corbin Burns trade, but as we mentioned on that podcast, it really doesn't matter what the Yankees have. It matters what the Brewers are looking for. And if the Brewers said to themselves, man, we love DL Hall. We love this guy. We want this guy in our rotation. It doesn't matter if the Yankees go, well, we have Chase Hampton. If they're like, well, we like the old Hall more, it is what it is, right? Um, we're, we'll see how the rest of the offseason plays out, but Alex, I think it's a good final touch to what has been a pretty good offseason for this team. I, I'd even give them an A. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Yankees are making moves. Um, they remained patient. I think this should be a little bit of proof for us, guys, that, you know, we saw Hector Neris go, Wandy Peralta go, we saw Keenan Middleton go, and we were all like, you know, Phil Maton. Like, you, you, you see all these bullpen arms are kind of getting going off the board but that doesn't mean the Yankees are out of it you know we talked about this they got better objectively this season Jose Trevino said we're gonna be a good team um I think you know, I wish he said great team but you know people will nitpick there um I do believe that this Yankee team is significantly better I think on paper it is objectively if you don't think this Yankee team is better you know we could show you the numbers because it, it obviously is the second you add Juan Soto to your team you are significantly better he is the one of the best top five hitters in baseball. You second you add a guy like that. Think about the Yankees without and with Aaron Judge, and think about the difference between how good and bad this team would be. Um, now you add Juan Soto to that combination to that equation. Obviously a lot better. Uh, now the bullpen has a guy like Ferguson, good lefty arm, really good stuff. Hopefully the Yankees continue to develop him even a little bit further, improve his stuff, uh, whatever that might look like. So right now, in my opinion, like you said, they're going for it. This is an obvious move, and I don't think the Yankees are done. Like done meaning. They could make moves leading up to the trade deadline. They're not done adding pieces. They're not done adding quality pieces, in my opinion. It just has to be the right pieces. It has to be the right timing and the right moment um, and the right player. Because the truth is, we've made these reactionary moves before. We forced the Frankie Montas deal. We forced the Joey Gallo deal. And look how that ended up. Ended up not going in our favor. We were taking risks when we shouldn't have. Um, And ultimately, I do believe the Yankees are are taking a little bit of a different approach this offseason. They're not taking risks. They're making the right moves with the right players that can promote us to a World Series contention. Um, And I do believe that is the equation they're following. It feels different. It looks different. You know, Ryan and I have been watching this team and their every little move, every single detail for a couple years now. And this feels and looks different, guys. Like we can tell you from that perspective, from the little small details, this type of move for Caleb Ferguson is different than, you know, going out and get our Hector Naris and giving him um, multi- like one year with insane incentives and he's 34 years old coming off his best season when he's bound to regress. The law of averages say he is bound to regress. We have seen Caleb Ferguson's, you know, stuff. He's really solid. He's younger. I mean, hopefully he can be durable for us, and I think this is the right move for the Yankees. So um, don't count the Yankees out. We know we wanted them to make moves. We thought they were staying still and kind of just – waiting and buying their time, and then they come out with a move like this that, in my opinion, actually is better than bringing in Hector Neris. It's better than Wandy Peralta and Keenan Middleton. So we passed in all those guys, and we ended up with some even better. So just give them a little time. Um, yes, a lot of people are going to say I'm Brian Cashman shilling right now, but I do think that the equation that we're following this offseason, it looks and feels different than in the past. So let's give it a chance. Um, this team is objectively better. So obviously happy to hear perspectives down below in the YouTube comments section. Make sure to like and subscribe as always, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.